So moving to the next context, which is called incoming calls wildcard. Now I want you to imagine a situation when you have hundreds of extensions and writing rules for each of them is going to be a real pain, very time consuming. So in this case, the wildcards are actually going to save us. So let's take a look at a single rule with two steps in incoming calls wildcard context. As you can see, I've changed the last digit of dialed extension to capital X, which is any number from one to nine and zero. But you can also tell asterisk that this rule contains a wildcard and you can do it with putting subscribe sign in the beginning. But how can we tell asterisk what to dial when we have wildcards in our rules? So this is why we use built-in variables. One of them is the extend. This is the way all variables are referenced in asterisk. The dollar sign, open curly bracket, variable name, and close curly bracket. This particular variable contains a number that is being dialed in that rule. So if you're dialing 205, then the value of extend variable will be 205. Using this expression, we can address all the extensions from 200, 201, and to 209. And they'll be all processed by the same rule. So we can save up to 10 times in, in amount of time and space used to do this. On the other hand, what if you do not want to address all 10 devices in a range from 200 to 209? Then you can use another expression to, exact, to exactly point to whichever number you want to be accessed. Putting desired numbers in square brackets in a dial rule will make asterisk serve only numbers you've specified. So here you can use two ways to address extensions. Either you number them one by one, like two and three here, or you put them in a range using minus sign. So here six minus eight means all the numbers from six to eight will be included in this dialing rule. And those are six, seven, and eight. And as you can see, you can mix both of the ways in a single dialing rule definition. So this particular rule will address extensions 203, 204, 206, 207, and 208. And remember that in order to tell asterisk that you use wildcards or expressions to your rule, make sure your rule has the underscore. The next context shows, shows us another wildcard and asterisk. Here, dot represents any number of digits will follow. So overall extension will be starting with one and have at least four digits. Also, as you can see, here we use another way to dial SIP peer. In most cases, when you use a VoIP provider, you'll have to address it as an extension, but we'll pass it as a number to dial out. So here we assume that you have a, a FWD as your VoIP provider defined in a SIP Conf configuration file, and here's a way to address it. As usual, you tell Asterix that you are using SIP technology, going through the FWD provider and dial extension that has been dialed on phone. So, another important point I'd like to talk to you about is the context inclusion. As we previously saw, the context dialout was included in first context incoming calls. That means any rule defined in dialout context will be, pre, uh, will be present in incoming calls. This feature also saves you a lot of time and makes your dial plan easily readable and understandable. For example, you can have uh, up to two providers for dialing out. One is this cheap one and another one is not so cheap, but it has actually has the business quality that you, you want. And you want everybody except you only to use a cheap provider. What you, what you do is define two contexts for dial out, say dial out one and dial out two, putting each provider in a separate context and you define a context to reach your local phones. Then you define two contexts to put their calls from extensions and from yourself. And then comes inclusion. In context for your other extensions, you include rules 
to dial local phones in cheap outside providers. But in context for yourself, you include business quality provider and rules to dial local extensions. So as you can see, context and inclusions are a very powerful tool for assuring um, access control. So let's move on and take a look at some other actions that can be uh, taken with a place to call and dial plan. To actually be honest with you, there are a number of options here. What you can do with your call and covering them would actually <laughs> probably take days or weeks. But in these videos, I will provide you some good resources and information for you to actually um, dig up for yourself. But there's actually another interesting thing we should talk about, and that's the AGI or Asterisk Gateway Interface. And it's, uh, it's much like how CGI or common gateway interfaces, which is used to serve dynamic content on the web. AGI is used to execute any action you would like via extending your Asterisk capabilities with custom scripts. So it's very powerful. You can do absolutely anything with those scripts, like contacting your database, checking um, some web pages to get information, and uh, other things you would like to do. But for sure, this, this makes the assumption that you have some, <laughs> some good uh, scripting skills. The good news is that actually the AGI scripts can be written in any programming language you like. And Astro, com Astro communicates with them using standard input-output. So as long as your system is able to compile and execute, execute your script, Asterix will be able to use it in its dial plan. AGI is pretty simple to use, um, as you can see. You just put your AGI command in your dial plan, and that's it. Entering the step while processing the call will make Asterix call the script and to start communicating with it. So it's pretty cool stuff and very, very powerful. That's why a lot of people really enjoy working Asterix. The AGI is probably the most powerful tool in Asterix, and it allows you to handle the call in a particular way.